Hello again, it's me, it's Clayton. I got my Legend of Korra t-shirt, and I just came back from seeing Independence Day Resurgence. Now, director Roland Emmerich is often considered to be a guilty pleasure type of director. That he's made films that are incredibly cheesy and are incredibly over the top, but they're often very enjoyable rides, and the original Independence Day is certainly one of those films. Yes, it's corny and it has that 90s style of over-the-top, jingoistic action film, but there's just such a sincerity to it and there's so many entertaining moments that you can't help but love it. Independence Day Resurgence is basically a throwback to that type of filmmaking. Let's get to the story. After the aliens were repelled by, by the uh, Earth, Earth's defenses by the, in the, after the events of the first film, the world has basically gone on in a model of peace, if you will. As the humans have combined their technology with alien technology, we've elected our first female president, played by Silla Ward, and the world's basically moved on since the, since the attack in 1996. But, but now that it's 20 years later, the aliens come back once again, this time with a much bigger ship and with their alien queen, to try and take away Earth's core as a, you know, to essentially do the same shtick again and try to destroy Earth. And it's, up to the, the, and it's up to the characters from the first film as well as a couple of newcomers to repel the aliens and save Earth. It's a pretty basic, straightforward story once again. Even though the story is very similar to the first film, and in fact a lot of the sequences in this film are direct homages to sequences from the first movie. It's done in such a self-aware, almost parody-esque way that you can't help but enjoy them. Roland Emmerich knows that the whole film is an exercise in total ridiculousness, and therefore he treats almost every scenario as that. I mean, there's all... I mean, every single scene in the film is some type of self-aware comedy, where it's... Whereas, it, whether it's the uh, intentionally cheesy dialogue during exposition or uh, comedy scenes, there's humongous special effects that border on the obscene and the characters acting in a very unrealistic manner. And there's so many of, our, of the characters from the first film, Jeff Goldblum and Judd Hirsch's characters respectively, that treat the whole scenario like it's like it's just a, a bad dream, if you will. And speaking of which, let's get to the characters of the film. Jeff Goldblum's character of uh, David Levinson, he's about as funny as most Jeff Goldblum characters, as is Judd Hirsch's character, Julius, as his stereotypical Jewish father. Bill Pullman comes back, though unfortunately he doesn't deliver us a really amazing speech like he did in the first film, although they reference it. But he did his role fairly well as the former president Thomas Whitmore. Uh, one bit of, one character that I was disappointed by was Vivica A. Fox's character, because even though she was a minor character in the first film, she's even more minor here. She's only given about two scenes and then that's it for her character. Now it's true that Will Smith didn't come back for this movie, but his, but his replacement, being his son, Dylan, played by Jesse, Jesse Usher, is actually a pretty good replacement as he does happen to feel like the Will Smith of the movie, alongside Liam Hemsworth's character, who sort of fulfills the generic action hero character. But at the same time, like I said, Roland Emmerich knows these characters are practically, you know, stereotypes, and he has fun with those character types just like he did in the very first movie. Now, it's true that the Independence Day films aren't much about the story or the characters, it's more about this mind-blowing special effects. And the CGI here is really amazing. I saw this film in 3D and the visuals just popped out of the screen at me. There are so many explosions, cool-looking spaceships, aliens, etc. that you need to see this film in 3D or XD if you're planning on seeing it at all. The entire time the audience I saw, I, I saw the film with was in awe of all, all the visual splendor, which I'm sure is the, was the case for the very first film. And like I said, since it's 
obviously just pure concentrated entertainment, I expected this film's logic to be relatively stupid. And the logic throughout the film is really, really stupid. S characters do the un most unbelievable things, just like they did in the first movie. In fact, <laughs> to the point where they even bring back a certain character that I thought for sure died in the first movie. I'm pretty sure you know which one it is. But when it comes to a film that acknowledges its own ridiculousness, both in-universe and out-of-universe, I basically just turned my brain off and decided, you know what, I'm going to enjoy this movie because that's clearly what Roland Emmerich wants the audience to, to do. It's pure, concentrated entertainment. And because of that, I had a high-budget, low-intelligence good time. So, if you want a, an explosive, completely ridiculous, utterly in idiotic, but at the same time unbelievably entertaining film, Independence Day Resurgence is definitely a wild ride worth taking. That's why I'm going to give Independence Day Resurgence a 7 out of 10. See you guys next time. Oh.